Okay, this is what we're going to be working on today. Um, we're checking the um, TD and superheat and stuff. Right now, the unit's on the frost, and when it goes on the frost, the fans do shut off. And the heating elements in the back are warming up right now, melting the frost off the coil to keep it clear. Okay, this is the um, the evaporator coil that I have. It's right over here. It's the 120 ELC 120, and it's at 12,000 BTUs at a 10 degree TD temperature difference. And I usually measure my temper differences directly on the pipes, right after the evaporator, right after the expansion valve, and right at the um, uh, expansion valve bulb on the suction line, leaving the uh, uh, evaporator coil. Now this is, um, let me see, the ELC120, it's got three fans, and the CFM is 2100. And this is important over here. The saturated suction is, is 20 degrees. Okay, this is the expansion valve expansion valve selection and this is at 180 degrees you can get the expansion valve at 100 degrees that's colder weather but the 180 degrees and we want 404A and we want a 25 degree evaporator it's <laughs> these selections are usually done on 20 or 25 degree evaporator. The air temperature is usually 10 degrees colder in the box. So at a 25 degree evaporator, you're, you're shooting at a uh, a 35 degree air temperature, which is usually what's used for a, a, a standard 38 degree walk-in cooler. But we're using the um, we're running it colder, so we're going to the 20 degree evaporator, but this is close enough. And this is all that all I have to work with right here. And it's 12,000 BTUs at a 10 degree TD. So the 12,000 BTUs is, here's my expansion valve that they recommend. Now you notice it's a C. And this is the Sporlin valve, and the Alco valve is an RC. What the evaporator, the expansion valve that came with it was a, um, over here, 404, it was a ZP. ZP is used for freezers, and it means pressure limiting. It's so that when the system goes into a defrost cycle, the pressure doesn't build up too high, and you don't get a... Um, a big load coming back to the compressor all at once and it, it limits it. It's like a suction pressure regulating valve. As a matter of fact, you can't if you have a ZP valve on there, you can't have a suction pressure regulating valve on there also. It's one or the other. Um, it's a CPR valve. Um, but uh, now this is this ZP valve is pretty much for freezers for minus 20 degree evaporator. And we're not using it for freezer, we're using it for medium temperature, not low temperature. So so I had to change the, all I had to do is get a 404 uh, Sporlin head and change the uh, power assembly on top of the expansion valve. Just a matter of screwing the head off and putting the new head on it. And I was able to, to overcome this obstacle. When I, I did try to start it up and run it, and I was I got very poor results. Uh, it worked, but my um, my pressures were way off. And once I changed it, my pressures went right into um, right into sync where they were supposed to be. Okay, and that's pretty much the expansion valve selection. I uh, temperature coming out.
set this the other day, uh, a week and a half, two weeks ago when I put this in. And I set the expansion valve to a 12 degree TD. A 10 degree would give me a very humid box in here. But since they have a lot of product with cardboard and you don't want it a lot of condensation, you'd get musty cardboard and boxes would fall apart. A very dry box by rights should be at about 15 degrees TD. And right now the new expansion valve, the springs in it and the bellows are very tight and they've been working now for a week and a half or so had a chance to flex and loosen up a little bit. My original 12 degree setting, 13 degree setting that I had on the TD is now 9, 8.99, which is uh, considerably low, lower than I'd like. So to adjust the superheat on the expansion valve, clockwise so let's try to get this to get up to about 12 or 13 so I don't have much room to turn this here so let's see what that does now over here we can see this not showing up very good okay see my evaporator temperature is too cold, it's down to 18, and it should be 20. And I want to raise that up. And let's see. My superheat is 13 degrees on this system. Shit. And my T1, my probe, is 32.
suction pressure is 50 and this is 404. And I have a 16 degree evaporator according to this, which is a little bit low. But I'm running this box so cold. See, it's up, I've got a 12 degree TD now. That's kind of where I want to keep it. Maybe 13 is good. But I'm going to leave it right there. Now, okay, this is the condensing unit. It's up on top of the walk-in cooler. And I put it in here last July. I like to have a P-touch, a labeler, and I like to label everything. I generally, uh, I usually put the refrigerant down here, but it's, I don't see, I, I didn't put the, I, I, should, I should write 404A on it, but that's the labeler that I get. Good, especially for a refrigerant when you go onto a system. Oh, here we go. You can see it right in the whole thing. But yeah, I'll label it. That way I won't make a mistake or uh, you know, another one, somebody else. Um, let's see, that's the old condensing unit that was here. So you can just barely see it in the shadows there. That went bad. And what I do is I increase the capacity a little bit over what that was. So that in the future I could put a little bit larger evaporator in there. Now here's some specs. 